Hey guys, what's up? This is Tessa Jeffers with PremierGuitar.com. I'm here in Nashville with Mr. Bob Bruno of Best Coast. Hello, how are you doing? Stoked to be here. Yeah, Very well, thanks for taking time to show us your rigs today. Um, you're going to walk us through both your gear and Beth Cosentino's gear, right? Yep. Okay, so did you want to start with your guitars? Sure. Um, how many are you going to show us today? Uh, I think there's six of them for okay. me. Um, you can start with your favorite or your number one or whichever one you'd like. Okay. Uh, just go in order how they are in the boat here. Uh, so this is, I just got this uh, a little bit before the tour. It's the American Standard Fender uh, Shawcaster. And I love this Shawbucker oh. pickup in here. It's super loud. And uh, I was playing a Gibson uh, Joan Jett signature model. Yes. And I use it on the was record. Was that the Melody Maker? Melody Maker, okay. yeah. And, uh, that guitar just keeps getting more and more expensive. Yeah. So now I'm just like, I, I Are need- Are you gonna keep it at home? Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's it's back at home now by the couch. Um, but this has been a good replacement. It uh, sounds really great, distorted and clean too. So the Melody Maker had a, a humbucker in it. Yeah. A burst bucker Yeah, something. burst bucker. So this is, this shawbucker is doing- Kind of, yeah. It's something. just really high output nice. humbucker. And, uh, is Very that the main light. difference between a, a regular Strat and this one? Yeah, yeah. The, you can only get this pickup in this model. Okay. He, ma he made it special for this one. And uh, it just came out, I think, this year. And uh, it's awesome. Awesome. You don't really have a Strat usually in your arsenal? No. Honest, like, I haven't played a Strat uh, since I was, like, 19 or something. So, <laughs> like, that was the first guitar I bought. Um, so it's kind of an adjustment, just like, because the pickups are in different places. And, right. uh, but I'm getting the hang of it again. Nice. So it's nice, nice to have one again. Next, right. uh, this is a new Squire uh, Baritone Jazzmaster. I've seen this one before. Do you play this one a lot? Do yeah, uh, everything from our first record was all baritone guitar. So anytime we're playing those songs, and there's a couple from The Only Place, our second record, that are baritone, so. And did you choose that, like that fits your style or why did you want to? Yeah, uh, it was a combination of uh, being a three piece. So now we're a five piece, so I don't have to do as much of what I was doing before, but I would alternate between playing bass lines and then doing the leads. Uh -huh. So that's why I had the baritone. Um, and also uh, it is, sometimes it's just easier for me to write uh, uh, my parts, especially when I'm uh, doing stuff with female vocalists, mm -hmm. for some reason, just the voicing on uh, the baritone. Uh, it's easy to write to, nice. to uh, melodies and stuff. It's like a contrasting thing? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't play the low so much now, but it's a lot of high stuff, but yeah, I don't know, it's just. What about your tuning? Uh, 8A. Only, I, so on this guitar or on all your? All the baritones, baritones, they're both yeah. 8A. Nice. This one I got, uh, Mastery gave us this and uh, so I got Mastery Bridge and their vibrato system oh. and uh, I can't say enough awesome stuff about it like it Game changed it yeah yeah <laughs> uh, it's not hype like uh, yeah I, lo I love their stuff and uh, it, it really made this guitar like went from a backup to a main once, once I put the Mastery on here. And uh, do you stick with one type of string like gauge sets or? Uh, for these, I'm using the uh, Ernie Ball baritone sets. Nice. And uh, for my standard guitars, I'm using uh, the heavy top, light bottom, uh, the M Steel uh, that they came out with recently. I, I switched to those uh, for all standard stuff. Okay. Uh, so this is the Eastman hollow body. Don't remember the model number. It's a JT something. Um, but uh, they sent me this, Alex there sent me this guitar right before we started touring for this record. And I kind of, I threw it into the truck um, just so I could check it out. Cause it came literally like the day before the gear was leaving. Okay. And uh, I started playing it and I, I love it. Like neck is really nice and uh, small, R super easy to play. It just felt comfortable immediately. So. Uh, standard tune? Yeah, this one's tuned standard, and uh, it kind of alternates. Sometimes I'll open the show with it, and or sometimes I'll play it at, at the end, uh, just kind of feel it out. Yeah, uh, whatever mood you're in. Yeah, um, yeah, so this is a good one. Nice and light, too. Nice. 
So right now, this is my main guitar. I'd probably play this for most of this set uh, for standard tuning. Uh, this is the Elliott Easton signature model uh, Firebird called Tiki Bird. Um, I use this a lot on the record. And uh, my favorite feature is this switch here where it goes from this pickup right to the output, bypasses electronics. Mm -hmm. So you just get like a nice boost. What do the rest of them do? Uh, it's a couple that are uh, coil taps and then a phase one. And so did you seek this guitar out? Did you know, how did, is Elliot one of your inspirations? Yeah, and uh, when we were writing for uh, California Nights record, um, I was going through a big cars phase. So I was just looking up uh, performance videos of them uh, from the early days. And then I saw a video of him demoing the guitar and I saw many like tonal options it had. So I uh, decided to get one and uh, it just sounds really great uh, live and in the studio. So you used it on California nights in the studio? Yeah, yeah, probably say like at least a third of the songs I'm playing this guitar. Nice. There's a lot of this and a lot of that Joan Jet. It was like the kind of the all signature model maker. record. Nice. There yeah. are quite a few scorching like solos and riffs on the <laughs> record. So I was just gonna, I remembered one, Heaven Sent. Oh, uh -huh. has a pr like were you playing that guitar? Or? That was a Joan Jet. Like, uh, like through a really bad uh, combo of distortion and chorus, a guy tone pedal. But it has that perfect like 80s. <laughs> early 90s sound so yeah that was the uh, melody maker on that one How, what do you play live now since you're not bringing what guitar do you use uh it alternates right now I've, i was doing the strat but i kind of play it so hard that i'll have a string pop out sometimes so now i switch to the eastman hollow body uh for that one so is your attack pretty that one i, I do Beth's looked like her attack was pretty hard too. yeah yeah uh I'm kind of in between, but on that song, I do a lot of uh, where I'm meeting with this and just scraping uh, kind of like that. And uh, and I, I do hit it really hard on that one just because uh, I get pretty noisy on the end section. So, okay. uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so here, another signature model. Uh, this is the Warren Ellis tenor guitar. It's an Eastwood and- uh, That looks small. Yeah, yeah, small, white, only four strings. Um, this one I think is CGDA. Uh, and I play this on one song, uh, Sleep Won't Ever Come. Uh, so it's just here to play that one song. Uh, so what kind of tonal quality were you going for? Um, it just, uh, the main reason I went with this is uh, when Beth sent me the song, I really could not come up with something to play to it. And so I got this, I pulled out this guitar and immediately like the voicing of the tuning or whatever, uh, I was just able to write parts immediately. Um, but the pickups it, look really interesting. Do you know what they are? Yeah, I don't, it's probably like mini bucker and uh, I don't know what this guy is, but yeah, it's just nice. Sounds really pretty clean. And distorts too, uh, so I brought it just to play that one song, uh, but uh, it's fun to give my shoulder a break <laughs> for one song, and uh, <laughs> it, it sounds really good. I, I love this guitar. Cool. All right, so this is the guitar out of all of them that I've had the longest. Cool. Uh, this is, uh, this was my main baritone. It's the Eastwood Sidejack Deluxe, I think. Um, it looks loved. Yeah, yeah, especially <laughs> the back here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, we played a festival with Nine Inch Nails and after watching them destroy gear, uh, we got really hyped. So we just <laughs> played like the noisy, also it was at 1 a.m. so like no one's gonna care. And uh, we just played a really noisy set. And at the end of it, I kind of gave my guitar the it? rock bottom, yeah, yeah. And the headstock snapped off. Uh, but my friend Greg, who works on my guitars, uh, he was able to repair it. And he's like, yeah, you can re you, I can repaint it or whatever. And I was like, no, it looks awesome like that. So I just kept it. Uh, this has Mastery Bridge also. Did you put that on later? Um, yeah, I, it, it's been on there for a couple years. And uh, so yeah, this is now my backup. 
um, but I love it. It's, I don't know, a lot of sentimental value because. Uh, Two and eight A. Two and eight A. Do you know what kind of pickups those are? Whatever the stock. It's a stock jack. Yeah, yeah. East, Eastman Jack, you said, right? Uh, er, this is the Eastwood. Eastwood. Yeah. Side jack, baritone deluxe. And yeah, 8A with Ernie Balls on this too. Well, that's it for Bob's guitars. Now we're gonna look at his pedal board. And he recently said that he had it professionally done. So can you tell us about why you decided to do that and who helped you? Um, my friend Junior, uh, he works on a lot of people's pedal boards uh, in Los Angeles. Um, he put it together for me and uh, I did it because uh, I was just having some issues. Um, you have a lot of pedals. Yeah, there's a lot of pedals <laughs> on there. So cables would die or um, just there'd be weird distortion where there shouldn't be. So um, he made all the cables for it and uh, wired it properly. And uh, so now it's definitely roadworthy and we're doing a lot of touring. So. so you were telling me that you were roommates with Nels Klein for eight years. Yep. And it uh, looks like you guys have something in common. You both like pedals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess you can start with whatever uh, your signal chain or uh, whatever your favorites are or however, whatever you want to talk about first. Yeah. So Polytune 2, of course. Uh, it's good to have, especially when you're playing outdoors in the bright sun. So that's why I use that one. And then uh, this year I got to make this Best oh, Coast cool. signature fuzz, the fl Fluzzy, uh, with TSVG in Philly. And it's kind of based on the old Ibanez standard fuzz. Uh, so it's a gated fuzz. And it's good, it can be really bassy or really kind of nasally. Uh, so. so that's custom designed with TSVG? TSVG, yeah. We made, uh, I think we made like 500 of them. Oh, cool. Uh, Do you yes. know anybody else who's playing it? I don't. I gave Nels one, so uh, hopefully he's using <laughs> cool. it for something. Um, is, that, is that your mascot? Yeah, it's that's a, it's like Beth's cat, Snacks. Uh, in it's Raiders, on the album cover sometimes. Raiders Garb, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, so we are going after that, I think, to this uh, American Looper. So we have the Nanopog, and then the Mr. Black. Uh, Eterna Shimmer in the first loop. Um, sometimes I have to use both at the same time on solos. Uh, what, what is, why? Uh, instead of having to hit both at once, oh. I just uh, have it set at somewhere in the song and then just hit this guy and they both oh, come gotcha. on. Okay. And uh, yeah, less, uh, less mistakes uh, if I have it that way. And then the second loop is going to this Bigfoot Magnavibe, which is modeled after like uh, the vibrato and magnetone amps. And that was another thing Nels turned me on to. Um, and this uh, new cattle and bred Valcoder tremolo is in there too. So these two are the second loop. And uh, this, uh, besides tremolo, has an, uh, a boost in it too. So you can kind of get some nice overdrive with it too, if you crank it. Um, Are these your custom knobs here? Uh, the some of them, it's these. I got these. Uh, they're called stomp saver, stomp shield, or something. But they help. They, they protect my settings and also from me stepping. Mostly from me stepping on the knobs. It's very smart. Uh, so yeah, they're awesome. This is a serious board. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so from there, we are going to this. Uh, Nels gave me this a long time ago. This is the Forever Fuzz. It's a gnarly fuzz with a filter. Uh, and, uh, Does it I, come like that? Yeah. It's a one-off or not? No, no. All of them have the fuzz that. on the, the actual, this fuzz <laughs> material. Forever? Yeah. And uh, different, they're different colors, so too. Um, so mine just happens to be purple. Um, and I use that for solos and also for uh, just noise in between songs or at the end of the set. Uh, it's just massive sounding. Um, it's definitely a head turner every time I Do turn it on. Do you use it on the album? Yeah, I used it on uh, When Will I Change on the noisy solo on the outro of that song. Okay. There's, there's a lot of that pedal on there. And then, so this is just the favorite switch for the Strymon Deco. Uh, what is your favorite? 
Sweat, like uh, the, the favorite it's triggering is the uh, tape chorus simulation because um, I'm using three different effects out of this one pedal. So when I hit that, it goes to the, the chorus mode. When I hit this normal, it's um, the slapback delay, tape delay. And then I'm using this distortion here uh, for some solos and uh, a couple songs. It's the rhythm tone. Just a nice, like, saturated tape kind of uh, distortion sound. And then uh, this is a mid-fi electronics. Uh, it's two fuzz pedals in one. Uh, I've known Doug at mid-fi forever. And uh, I use so many different weird old fuzz pedals. When we were making the record, I, it's like, how am I going to do this? And so I went through a bunch of his fuzzes, and I was like, also, I was running out of room on the board. So I was right. like, can you make two in one housing? And uh, Does he so, normally do that, or is that just for you? Uh, he's done it for a couple people um, with different effects that they want combined into one. Uh, so this is the uh, psych bike fuzz and the fuzz, I think it's called fuzz wall. And those are in the noise clamp here because they're really noisy. Uh, so I do that just to... Uh, take out the um, in-between like high-end noise that those pedals generate and also kind of gives it like almost like a compression effect so it tightens them up a little bit and then so the, it's just interchangeable one turns on with here one turns on there yeah or you can have them both on oh. at the same time which is pretty gnarly um do you do that a lot uh no not not a lot uh sometimes now that I have this guy, that's the main noise. So is that your favorite? It's right now, yeah, definitely my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the most fun to play. I don't know why it took me so long to put it on my board. I've had it forever, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I did. Cool. Um, so then we have the Super Crunch Box. This is my main distortion. And uh, so it's probably 75% of this set is me using this distortion. So yeah, it's the main distortion. Uh, this I just put on the board uh, maybe a month ago, it's the Cattle and Bread Zero Point uh, flanger. And uh, it's really cool uh, when it has no knobs for me to mess up, which <laughs> I love. On switch is up here, and this is like supposed to simulate putting your finger on an actual tape reel. So you can, you can bring out the, the swoosh of the phase whenever you want. Uh, by the motion? No, just by holding this down. Oh. So okay. that engages the, the act, act of flanging on right. the fake tape reel that it oh, is cool. there. Um, this is the TSVG hard stuff. It's a clean boost. Uh, this has probably been on my board longer than any of the, anything else on here. Um, it's just, uh, doesn't color the sound and it's just loud. And uh, then we have... Do, do you have any that are on all the time? Uh, just for leads. Okay. Or if I'm doing, there's a couple songs where I'm playing clean and I need to be just slightly louder, so I'll turn that on. And then the El Capistan, this is like essential to me. Um, just a good uh, tape delay simulator. And I like the oscillation function that this, you can do with this by holding it down. And also uh, there's a sub control where you can add reverb once you turn the pedal on. So it's nice to have like, especially when I'm doing the surfier sounding stuff, to have extra reverb for those kind of lead sounds. And then last, uh, the Callum Bread Talisman uh, plate reverb simulator. And uh, that stays on all the time. It's just a nice uh, kind of mellow reverb. Doesn't color the sound too much. Just really pristine sounding. Um, and uh, then have the... The Line 6? Yeah. Ubiquitous Line 6 delay. What are, what's all the pink? Uh, my settings, so the tech knows uh, where where these knobs should be. Um, and I just mostly use this between songs. I'll just have a make a loop while the song is dying out. Mm -hmm. So just have some ambient stuff going on. Okay. Um. Uh, if you had to get by with just a few pedals, what would your essential ones be? Uh, the El Capistan and Distortion. I 
and then just a third. And that game, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so, so I guess the next thing we need to talk about is your amp. Yep. Do you just have one with you right now? Yep, just one amp. And it's the Mesa Boogie Mark II, I believe. 115. Uh, don't know a lot about it. I bought it, it on looks Craigslist. Pretty vintage. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it's, you, you know, know a year? Or? I think he, he said it was '82. Nice. Um, but yeah, I love playing through a 115, uh, especially with the baritone. You get the, you can really hear the low frequencies, and uh, it just looks cool. I mean, it has the, the knitted front, the old style Mesa, and um, yeah, and it's loud. I only have it at three, and it's plenty loud for me. Um, do you know uh, anything about the speakers? I think it's a Celestian, Celestian. 15 back there. Uh, and do you mess with your settings or do you leave it? Uh, I'll, I'll just, yeah, mostly the high end, depending on what the room sounds like. Uh, but everything else pretty much stays the same. Okay, yep. great. And so you help Beth with some of her Ye signal chain? And yeah, I put together Beth's board. Um, and kind of help pick what effects. Like she'll kind of tell me what she's going for, and then I do some research. And you guys have been playing together for quite a while, right? Yeah, we the band started with just me and her as a duo, so it's been like over five years now. Okay. And do you help her with guitar stuff? Uh, she's got her own thing going. She on. has her own thing. Um, so she, yeah, she has. She's always been a Fender person. I kind of have been all over the place, but yeah, she's pretty much played. Fender's almost the entire career of Best Coast. Okay, so let's take a look at Beth's board and her two guitars that she's bringing on the road. Cool. Okay, so what are we? What guitar is this? Uh, this is Beth's main guitar. She plays this most of the set. It's the new uh, American Standard Azteca Gold. It's a limited color that they're doing. Uh, Beth loves gold. It's beautiful. So uh, yeah, it's nice, really light. Sounds really good, um, so yeah. Is that, did that just come out in the past few years, or do you know what year? We got it, I think it came out this year. Um, I've no, I haven't seen one. Ever. Yeah, I, yeah, they, it just came in the, they didn't even tell her they were sending it, it just showed up one day. Cool. Um, but yeah, so she plays this probably 80% of the set is, is this guitar. And so she's always, she's like strats before this one, uh, what was she playing? Kind of, she's run through all the Fender uh, when we started, it was a Mustang, then she switched to Tellys, and she used Tellys for a long time. Um, and then uh, we went down to Fender, and she tried, she has another gold Strat, um, and she tried that one, and then that kind of started her Strat phase, which she's in right now. Is her other one white body, or uh, like an off-white? It's off, it's like a cream plate. color with, uh, you used to have this, we switched the pick guard. So it used to have this pick guard on it, and it has all gold hardware. Nice. Oh, so she put that pick guard from her old guitar. On yeah, side. yeah. So that when I gold get on gold. yeah, and also the the whammy bar here, and when we get home, uh, we're gonna complete the swapping, and we'll have the gold tuners from that guitar and the gold uh, bridge thing. Okay. So on best parts, does she use the whammy bar a lot? Uh. A couple. On the record, she got really into the whammy bar. For this and last record. Yeah, yeah. On the And uh, our producer, Wally, had an awesome 60s jazz master with a really great whammy on it. So that kind of started uh, her doing whammy stuff. Okay, and, uh, cool. Yeah. And this is the other guitar Beth uses. This is the Fender. Troy Van Leeuwen uh, from Queens of the Stone Age, his signature uh, jazz master. Uh, Beth really loves this oxblood kind of color. Uh, this has a mastery bridge also and vibrato. Uh, John from mastery came down and put it on himself. He's wow. the sweetest guy. Uh, and uh, it was cool to sit with him and have him explain all the parts. And uh, so Beth uses this at the start of the show on some of the heavier, like rockin' numbers and uh, a couple of the old songs. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so she, do you know if she has a specific string? string oh, game? she's using 10s, tens. Uh, Ernie Ball, M Steel also. And we both use the same. 
uh, black Dunlop one millimeter picks. picks. Yep. What is the M steel? Why did you guys decide to use? Uh, I went to Ernie Ball and tried, they gave me a bunch of strings to try. And uh, that one they said is their most like kind of, uh, give, provides the most sustain. And uh, so I put them on my guitar first and it was true. It was just like really great sustain. Uh, just a lot of clarity, like, uh, but not like in a harsh, bright, like new strings sometimes are. Um, so um, I switched to those and they sound good for both nice. of us. Cool. She also uses a Miss Boogie. Yep. And Lone Star? Yeah, Lone Star, 112. Have you guys always been a Miss Boogie amp people? Uh, I have. Um, Beth, she was using the orange for the last couple of years. And, uh, but we do a lot of fly dates, so it, it was hard to get those. And uh, so we both, uh, when we do flying shows, we would try and get Lone Stars. And uh, our house guy really likes it, and uh, I like it. And so we just got her one, and Mesa Boogie did this custom gold Tolex for her. Oh. And um, so yeah, it's just cl clean all the time. The, the distortion comes from the pedals and the reverb's coming from the pedals, so. But it's just a nice, clean sounding amp and works really good with pedals. Okay, speaking of pedals. Yeah, so. Uh, it's pretty streamlined. Yeah, so I put this board together for Bethany. Um, Polytune 2, just like me. Uh, we have the EP booster, which uh, stays on all the time. And uh, that's really good, especially, like I said, when we're doing fly-in dates, sometimes amps can sound a little thin. Uh, you never know what you're getting. And so that gives us a little bit of cons consistency with her tone and uh, gives her a little more uh, just like bottom to the guitars. Uh, so we we'll always have that. Uh, this is the blue bonnet from Mojo Hand. Um, that was... Beth's main uh, distortion for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she still uses it on uh, songs where she needs like a darker kind of tone. Um, and then we have the Wampler Euphoria, which is her main distortion now. Uh, it's kind of when Beth switched to in-ears, she wanted a little more clarity, but also kind of a little more distorted tone. Great. So that was perfect. Uh, I got it right on the first time with that one. Nice. Uh, I was like, check this out, and she liked it. And so it's been on the board for a while now. And then uh, we have the Hardwire, the Digitech Supernatural. That's just used for California Nights, uh, the shimmer setting. Ah. And uh, it stays on all the time for that song. Because um, in the studio, I had this crazy multi-effects chain going to, because uh, she wanted kind of uh, that song is in influenced by Spaceman 3, so she wanted kind of a drony sustained tone. So I was like, okay, let me put on this shimmer thing. And so that goes on for that song, and the Maleco analog delay um, is also on for that. And then last, the Holy Grail, which uh, stays on all the time. Beth's been using that since the band started. Um, it's her favorite reverb, uh, so yeah. All right. And thank you so much for taking the oh, time before my your show to show us everything and happy pedal playing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.